the Vikings, despite being famous for being the bloodthirsty warriors who looted, raped and destroyed everything they found in their path are actually much more than that. In fact, some historians consider them, along with the Greeks and Romans, the great fathers of modern Europe. Want to know why? All right, then stay until the end of the video. The origins of the Vikings date back to the Germanic peoples, who were peoples, Indo-European who settled in Northern Europe. How do we know this? Well, because of the linguistic similarities between the Nordic languages and other Germanic languages, such as German or Dutch. These peoples, who initially settled on the coasts of Norway, Denmark and Sweden, initially lived peacefully and had little contact with the major European states, such as the Greek city-states or the Western Roman Empire. The first documented appearance of the Vikings, and what many consider to be the start of the Viking Age, is in June 793, following the invasion of the Lindisfarne Monastery in Northern England, where the Vikings looted and murdered several monks and took the survivors as slaves. This would be the start of a series of various attacks, where the most affected were the British Isles, that is, the current United Kingdom and Ireland, the island of Iona, Scotland in 795, and in the following decades, various settlements in the Hebrides. That same year, there would also be the first attack on Ireland on the island of Rathen, and subsequently on some other monasteries in Wales. Yes, they targeted the British as a point. How could they execute numerous raids on existing kingdoms? Well, due to the unfriendly geography of Scandinavia, the Vikings developed a quite modern fleet for their time with boats known as Drakkar of shallow draft, which allowed them to dock more easily on any coast and therefore enter by surprise before the victims could react. At the beginning of the 9th century, the Vikings would begin expeditions to the unstable Carolingian Empire, which, upon the death of Charlemagne in 814, became easy prey as the civil wars among the Carolingians began. The Vikings managed to loot some cities that they entered through the Seine Loire and Dordogne rivers. One of these offensives was the attack on Paris, in which the legendary Viking Ragnar Lodbrok participated. Gradually, they were establishing bases from where their expeditions would depart, such as in the Orkney and Hebrides Islands in Scotland and in Noir Moutier Carolingian Empire. Some became important cities like Corporation in 846 and Dublin in 841, which even became the capital of Ireland. With this, the Vikings show that they were not content with being simple pirates, but they had the makings of conquerors. And it was not for less, because according to their religious beliefs, the bravest would inherit the paradise of Valhalla. The main gods, as you should already know, were Odin, Thor and Frey. However, unlike the rest of the Europeans, there was greater religious freedom, as not all Scandinavians were obliged to follow the religion, plus they did not worry about imposing it during their conquests. On the other hand, the role of women was not so repressed, they could even choose who to marry. As for religion, the Vikings were divided into aristocrats, who controlled the lands, owned the drachal, and decided on the expeditions. The free men, who were peasants and craftsmen, could participate in the conquests, but received less part of the loot. And finally, the slaves, who were mostly prisoners captured from the lootings, but their treatment was not as bad as the slaves from the rest of Europe. Wow! Well, it seems that for their time, the Vikings were a quite advanced society. I wonder if that's why the Nordic countries are now the most prosperous and advanced. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated with more content. But anyway, continuing with the looting, in the following years, the Vikings would plunder the Muslim civilization and then attack Italy. Indeed, Viking terror was now dreaded not just in Northern Europe, but all over the continent. For this, the Vikings who invaded Northern and Western Europe came from what is now Denmark and Norway. The Swedes, on the other hand, ventured east, where they were known as Varangians. The Varangians used the Dnieper and Volga rivers to explore Eastern Europe. By the 860s, they would found Kiev, turning it into an important center in the middle of the trade routes between the Byzantine Empire and Northern Europe. This city would be the capital of Kievan Rus, which was founded by the Varangian Oleg of Novgorod in 882, and this state would be the basis of the future Russian state. 
Yes, a Viking founded the most extensive nation on Earth. You see, the Vikings were not just bloodthirsty pirates, and they have left a great mark on history. While the Vikings were fighting with everyone, they also had internal conflicts. So many peoples and small kingdoms would need to start unifying. The first was Norway, which after the Battle of Hartford Harald Worst of Norway would achieve a victory over the other kingdoms and would be crowned as the first king. In Denmark and Sweden, on the other hand, they continued to form certain kingdoms. And do you think the Vikings were content with continental Europe? Well, no. Around 874, the Norwegian Vikings led by Ingolf Arneson arrived in Iceland driving out the Icelandic monks who had settled there. Several Vikings would migrate to these islands and in 930 it would be converted into a commonwealth. Due to Iceland's distance from mainland Europe, the Icelanders did not receive foreign linguistic influences, so it is said that a speaker of modern Icelandic could understand a Viking speaker of Old Norse. Returning to France, after the disintegration of the Carolingian Empire, the Vikings who settled in the north of the Cold West, known as the Normans, managed to found the Duchy of Normandy in 911, after the Treaty of saint clair sur epte where the Viking chief Rolf Granger, in order to receive all these saws, swears loyalty to the King of France, Charles III. Also naturally, the conversion to Christianity. Look, the Vikings were adaptable in religious affairs, the Normans would eventually integrate into France, so to speak. They were a fusion of Vikings and France. During the following centuries, they would make certain conquests in England and Ireland and southern Italy, Tarragona in Spain, and note that they would even reach the Middle East. While they were not 100% Vikings, I tell you this to emphasize the legacy left by the Vikings, and it seems that conquests were in your blood. After Iceland, the next stop to the west would be Greenland. The first to found a settlement was Eric the Red around 985, who baptized it with this name which means Greenland, so the name would be more attractive and thus convince more migrants. Although we all know that it was somewhat deceptive, as most of this country is covered by ice, Eric's son, Leif Erikson, would continue exploring America and would found a territory that was called Vinland around the year 1000. All of this was documented in the Vineland Sagas, and truthfully, the existence of this land was in doubt until the 1950s, when remains of Viking settlements were found on the island of Newfoundland, Canada, in the area of Meta Cove. Even though these settlements didn't last more than a couple of decades, the truth is that the Vikings arrived in America almost 500 years before Columbus. For this, Iceland and Greenland started as Christians. As I mentioned earlier, the Vikings had freedom of worship, so some were gradually adopting Christianity. The Christianization of the Vikings, which began in the 9th century, would be a slow progress through missions from France and England, and would not culminate until the 13th century after the foundation of the archdioceses of Denmark, Sweden and Norway. Returning to the British Isles well, the Vikings had found a perfect business, looting and then asking for indemnities that were becoming increasingly profitable, in addition to having established colonies such as York and Dublin, and having quelled resistance in episodes like the Battle of Malden. However, the pinnacle of Viking influence in the British Isles would begin when Sven Barnes of Denmark ascended to the throne, becoming King of England for a short period after deposing Ethelred II after reaching London itself. In 1016, However, the Vikings would regain control of England when Canute, the great son of Sven Burma, simultaneously reigned in Denmark, England and Norway. This period was known as the North Sea Empire and would last until 1035, post-Anglo-Saxons reclaiming power. After a few years, Denmark would unify in 1058. In the British Isles, the Viking influence would end after the defeat at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, where the Norwegian king Harald III Hardrada died in an attempt to claim the English crown. As a result, the Viking army was almost destroyed, and it marked the end of the Viking invasions in England. While it is said that the Viking era would end with the defeat of Harald III, the truth is that the Vikings never actually disappeared as such. But over time, they began to mix with the locals in the territories they conquered. Perhaps thanks to that ease of integration demonstrated by the British, Irish, France, Spaniards, Russians, Ukrainians. 
Viking blood runs through all of them, that's why I emphasize. The Vikings, along with the Greeks and Romans, were the great founders of Europe. If you liked this video, don't forget to support me with a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel to stay updated with more content. Until next time.